Once we finish animation rendering for all the cameras, we can move on to post-production in Adobe After Effects. First, we need to open our project settings. Under color settings, change depth to 32 bits per channel float. Working space to Adobe RGB 1998 and check mark linearize working space. Now we can import our EXR sequence. To do that, go to File, Import, File, and select all the sequences and make sure that the Open EXR sequence is checkmarked. Once our footage has been imported, right click on it and go to Interpret Footage slash Main. Under Alpha, make sure to select Ignore, otherwise we'll lose our sky. Also, make sure that the frame rate is set to 20 frames per second. Next, drag the footage down to the Create New Composition button. This will add our sequence to its own composition in the timeline. Then, make a separate folder for the footage and the composition to keep it organized. Now we can start extracting the render elements. We'll want to use Reflect, Refract, and Bloom Glare. To do this, duplicate the original footage, right-click on it, and rename it after the render element it will refer to, in our case, Reflect. Then go to Effect, 3D Channel, Extractor, and change the tab to Reflect. In the Reflection layer, select the Screen Blending mode. We'll be able to adjust the opacity under Transform, just like in Photoshop. We can repeat this process for any render elements we want to use. Just duplicate the original sequence, rename it, and use the extractor to extract it, just like we did for reflection. Now we'll want to make some other adjustments, like color corrections. To do this, right-click in this area, select New, Adjustment Layer. Make sure that the Adjustment Layer is selected so that we can add anything within that Adjustment Layer. For now, we'll use Effect, Color Correction, Lumetri Color. Lumetri Color is great because it's fairly similar to the Camera Raw filter in Photoshop with a lot of the same options for adjustment. After doing some tweaks on Exposure, Contrast, Shadows, and other options, we'll make another adjustment layer. This time, we'll use Effect, Color Correction, Photo Filter. And we can change the temperature of the scene lighting by selecting Warm or Cool options and Opacity. Now that our composition looks good, we'll want to export it. To do that, select File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Under Lossless, change the output to AVI, and the output to is what we click to set the folder we want to save the AVI to. Then hit Render on the right. Here is the result. We are done with After Effects at this point, and we can repeat the same process for all the footage we have. Once that's done, it's time to jump to Adobe Premiere to combine these AVIs and add music. To start, select New Project, name our project, set the path we want to save it to, and hit OK. Next, we'll import our video clips. Go to File, Import, select our video clips, and hit Open. We've now imported our video clips. We can choose to view them as thumbnails, or we can view them a list. Next, select all video clips and make a folder for them, since we want to import music and keep them organized. Now that's done, we can select video clips and drag them into the timeline which will create our sequence. Next, we want to add a crossfade between our clips. To do that, we'll need to offset our clips to make them overlap. This overlap is important because it allows us to create fades between the different clips. Begin by placing the cursor pointed near the end of a clip and hit Ctrl plus left click. This will add a yellow line at the end of our clip. While holding down Ctrl and Shift, we'll add those same yellow lines for all the clips. To do that, go to the number pad on the keyboard, type negative 12 and hit enter. 
This will move our video clip back along with any other clips that come after it. After making yellow lines for all the clips, hit Ctrl plus D to add a cross dissolves. We can change the duration of crossfade by changing the duration time on the top left. Now that we've got all the video clips offset with dissolves, it's time to import our audio. To do that, go to the file, import, select audio file and click open. Just like we did for the sequences and footage, click the folder button to create a folder for our audio. Now we can drag our audio into our timeline. We need to match the end of the first audio sequence with the beginning of the second one by fading in and out. To do that, click the tab at the top. This will open our effect panel on the right hand side. Select audio transition, exponential fade on the end of our audio clip. We can adjust the length of the exponential fade by grabbing it by the edge and moving it forwards or backwards. Now all our video clips have cross dissolves and we have audio that matches the footage. We can now export our animation. Go to export media. Change the format to the edge.264 preset. Match source high bitrate and for the output name, this is where we'll want to save our video to and name it. Make sure that the export video and export audio is checkmarked and then click the export button. Okay, we are at the end of this project. Hope everyone enjoyed. Let's see the result.